Thank you. First, I want to just say thank you for this amazing cruise. It's, it's asked and it is given in every moment. It's just... Um, you Look what you all have done. You have managed to get someone to build a boat for you. Yeah. <laughs> You've managed to get them organized enough that they know where they're going with it. <laughs> they gathered up all these people to take care of things and to put everything in order for you. You are vivid creators. We just showed up at the last minute, actually. <laughs> I've been working uh, for quite a while on two main issues in my life. Um, one is weight and the other is finances. And um, I've been, I'm fairly self-aware and I watch myself go through phases of sometimes I feel like I'm in the stream, but I'm kind of numb, I notice later. Or, and sometimes I really feel like I'm in the stream. Um, other times, um, well, those are the two main things I'm remembering right now. So I guess my question is, how do I get in the stream more often, get with the flow more often? Um, because I notice, well, go on, you were going to say some. It's interesting when someone, and it happens often, someone says, I have an issue or I have two issues that I've been working on for a while. Mm -hmm. And we say, therein lies your problem. In other words, when you have something that you give the label an issue, mm -hmm. it means you spend a lot of time thinking about it. And right. the fact that you're calling it an issue means you spend a lot of time with upstream thoughts about it. Right. When you say, I want to find some more downstream thoughts. And we know that this is a vernacular that we've been throwing out there. And we want to talk about that with a little more detail here for a little bit. Because it becomes annoying when you have something that you want and you understand the essence of creation. And you know about vibration and you know about law of attraction and you know that it's about closing the gap. And you know that closing the gap is indicated to you by how you feel. But you're not sure how you feel. Sometimes you feel numb and you're not sure that what you're feeling is accurate. And, right. and so it's sort of like we're spinning around in this uncomfortable way because we're saying, let your feelings be your guide, pay attention to the way you feel, point yourself downstream. And if you're not sure that you're doing that, then everything that you've been hearing leaves you in the place that you were before you were hearing it right. of not knowing to, what to do about your life. So we want to talk about this business of emotion and this business of downstream thoughts because you can't really talk to anyone else about it because no one else's thought and no one else's feeling has anything to do with you and where you are. We haven't talked about it uh, as we've been together, but it's such an important understanding that we're going to bring this worn out story back into the seminar here by reminding you about the navigational systems in your vehicles and how they operate because there are two points that are now being compared one to the other. And the points that have this relationship are where I am and where I want to be. And because there are these two points that have vibrational relationship, you can figure out where you are one to the other. So when you try to figure out what to do based upon what other people have done, you introduce information that's not pertinent to your journey because what they think and what they feel and what they have done doesn't have anything to do with your vibration. Now, it's possible you could focus upon it long enough that what they're thinking and feeling is similar to what you're thinking and feeling, but their vibration is apart from your vibration. The, that's why when we say, and, and we know you like the story, it's as easy to create a castle as a button because the relationship between where you are and your button or where you are and your castle is only this vibrational journey. It isn't about anything else. And what slows people down is that they make it about what that one's doing and that one's doing and that one's doing when it only has to do with what you're doing. So, for example, 
let's say that sometimes Esther will see a television program. And the television program is really negative in nature. In fact, if you all saw her see it, you'd say, oh, Esther, I would have thought you would be doing better by now. <laughs> For example. So Esther's watching this program, and this television program is doing a really first-class job of making fun of someone who has been annoying Esther. So watching them make fun of someone who's been annoying Esther, most anybody would say, oh boy, is she ever pointed upstream? Except it might not be an upstream experience for Esther. It could very well be a downstream experience for Esther because poking fun at them felt better than the powerless way she felt about them before she poked fun at them. You following? So... Sometimes you may look into your past and you may say, oh, I can't believe I ever did that. That was an upstream thought. Or sometimes somebody, even somebody close to you, a friend, a, a co-creative friend, a student of Abraham friend, someone that you live with, somebody that you love, somebody that knows you could very well say to you, oh, that's an upstream thought. And you have to be able to say to them, it might be and it might not be, but I don't think you really know. You can't okay. tell which of my thoughts are upstream or downstream for me because you don't know what thought I had before that one. If you think that thought was upstream, <laughs> you should have heard what I was thinking before I thought that. I didn't even start talking to you until I started getting pointed downstream, you can tell. So this vibrational relationship is really an important thing. So when you say, I have an issue with something, what you're saying is, I've been struggling with this for a long time. I've wanted something that I couldn't figure out how to get it for a long time. And so you're right. It is upstream in nature when you feel that way. Because, and you can tell by the way you feel about it. The words you would use to describe these two situations are discouraged, sort of overwhelmed, really kind of tired of the subject. In other words, it has been mm -hmm. a, an upstream battle for you and uncomfortable. So now we want to help you to diffuse the idea that there are any issues. We want you to, to use a different word than issue. And it really is as simple as deciding that you want to feel better. So which, which is upstream and which is downstream? Which feels worse and which feels better? The word issue or the word subject? Subject. Subject is, is downstream, issue is upstream. Now, everyone might not agree with that, but you can sort of feel. So, so if you were reaching, really using your powerful now as you're learning that you can do, you would say, I have a couple of <laughs> subjects that I would like to discuss. You'd make that effort to make it a downstream. And what are those subjects? Those subjects are finances and body weight. Now, it feels different already, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But then, but then, and it's all right, you, wanting to be the realistic person and tell it like it is, you, like most people, say, and this is something that I've been struggling with for a long time. <laughs> struggling is upstream. So, struggling, contemplating. Struggling with contemplating, struggling, considering, struggling, wanting to get a handle on, wanting to figure out, looking forward to finding answers, looking forward to getting some really good progress, looking forward to understanding it enough that I can teach it to others. Feel the difference? Mm -hmm. So feel how diffusing all of that is. And that's what you're reaching for. You're reaching for relief. And the relief that you're reaching for is the relief that your thoughts can provide your being. The relief, that, because that's where all of your control is. You don't have the power, nor would you want to have the power to drop 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or whatever pounds. You wouldn't want the power to drop them now. You wouldn't. Your body would be in shock. We'd have to get a helicopter for you. <laughs> you don't want to drop it all at once. You want it to, to leave in a sort of gradual way. You want it to leave in a way that is healthy for your body. You want to do it gradually. And we want you to understand you want it to be a vibrational, emotional journey, not an action journey. Right. So once you get that, 
in place. Once you start thinking more downstream thoughts, that really is all that is necessary. If you'll look at every failure that you've had relative to any subject, you or anybody else on the planet, and you'll, as you remember the action journey that you took, you'll try to recall the emotions that were present at the same time, you'll realize that with all of that stuff that hasn't been working for you, you've had upstream, 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 upstream thoughts. So vivid that we want to shout to all of you, your action does not mean diddly squat. Your action's just the way you pass the time. Your action isn't what's making it happen. And it's hard to wrap your thoughts around that because you know, you can pick things up and move them over there and pick things up and move them over there. And you say, oh, look how much my action has accomplished. Certainly it took action to create this vessel that you are sailing on, but there was much more than action that got this ball going, you see. And so when you realize that it's all about thought and vibration and feeling and you take it out of the realm of action and you realize you don't have control over the action right now, but that you do have control over the emotion and the thought. And so you start applying yourself literally and intentionally moment by moment by thinking the thoughts that feel best to you. Before you know it, you get into a rhythm and then you can't help but begin to notice the patterns of your life changing because they must change. When you change the pattern of your thoughts, then everything that wraps around that and comes to that must change and will. It comes down to people saying, give me an improved condition and then I'll have a better feeling response. We say it doesn't work that way. You must find a better feeling response and then you'll get the improved condition. I'll say, no, I'm sure. I'm sure that a lot of things have come to me first and then I've noticed them and had a feeling for them. And we say, undoubtedly you have, but that's not what deliberate creating is. That's regurgitating.